to see everybody out tonight. We appreciate you being back out in the house of the Lord on a Sunday evening, and uh, we appreciate everybody coming out. Hope you had a great day. How many people had a great day today? It's absolutely beautiful. How many people took a nap today? You know, I didn't take a nap today, and uh, boy, that's really shocking for me, so the sermon may not be long. <laughs> Don't hold your breath, though. Don't hold your breath. But anyhow, so good to have you. So good to have you out, to, out this evening for the service. Uh, boy, we had a good service this morning. Diane got baptized, and, and they told me, yeah, what a great, what a great day. And do uh, you see your picture on Facebook? Well, that'd be about the same, man. But anyhow, they're, le they're leaving in the morning. It's been a blessing to have Rob and Diane with us, and just pray that they have a, have a good, safe trip back. And uh, they're going to stop and look at a few places in Florida. They're thinking about making the uh, southern journey. I guess I can say that out loud, can I? And, uh, and uh, so pray for them that uh, they'll, they'll do what's right. Amen? Amen? And get them out of that cold country up there. If I was up there in that cold country, I'd have to leave too. I can't. Wow. Whew. Mercy. Just, you know, I was talking to one of my friends today in Statesville, North Carolina. The guy's been like a daddy to me. Cecil, if you're on tonight, buddy, I love you. And he told me it's supposed to be 27 tomorrow night in Statesville, North Carolina. 27 in Statesville, North Carolina. And uh, then my buddy Glenn told me in West Virginia you're going to be in the 20s. So, uh, man, they're getting ready to have uh, uh, spring, summer, and fall. Looks like it's about over for them. So, uh, but you know what? It's still summertime here in Florida. Amen. I love it. Amen. Well, let me brag on the major a little bit tonight. Uh, boy, he did a great job this morning. And uh, wow, Th thank you. Thank you. Uh, somebody sent a message today and said, uh, boy, like father, like son. And I take that as, he may not take that as a compliment, but I take it as a compliment. And uh, he's probably, you know, I, I, you know, I was telling Dennis a minute ago, Dennis and I were talking about it. I know a little bit about preaching. Now, even though I, I can't preach, I know a little bit about it. I've been doing it 45 years. And uh, he, can, he can handle himself and preach as good as people that have been preaching for years. And uh, he, 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 gives you, he gives you information and gives you what you need, gives you Bible, and backs it up. And uh, I'm, just, I'm just, you know, he's my son, uh, but I'm extremely proud of him anyhow. And uh, just appreciate the great job that he's doing. And just, uh, you know, he just continues to grow and, and, and does better, seems like, every time he gets up. So thank you, Major. Uh, we just appreciate that. And, uh, and I think all the people love you. And really, he's smarter than I am. I figured you probably figured that out by now, haven't you? He, he takes after his mama. His mama, one of the smartest people I've ever known. I never did claim to be real smart. I, you know, I, I, I do claim to have some common sense, which is a lot of things that a lot of people don't have. But, uh, but you know, his, his mama is extremely smart. 
He's extremely smart. I don't know if you watch him or not, and if, you know, but during the sermon, he takes my sermon down texting on the, every sermon and then sends that out to people. And it's, it's not verbatim, but it's pretty close. And uh, I don't know how he does it. If I text to you, I <laughs> love backspace, backspace, delete, I love you. And sometimes it don't come out right. But uh, he, he can do that and listen and take all that. And so, you know, he's very smart. You don't get to be a major in the military and, and, and not be smart. And uh, we just, I appreciate you, buddy. I just want you to know that tonight. I appreciate you. And, and Huh? And it, well, it is something to brag about. If you want, yeah, I, you, know, it, you know, if he wasn't my son, I'd probably brag on him more. <laughs> you know, but you know, it looks bad me bragging on him all the time. But I do want to brag on him because I am proud of the job he did. Amen. Amen. And what a great thing he and Carla celebrating their spiritual birthday yeah. on Monday or on Tuesday. But it's really, if it would have been on the day of the week, it'd be today. It was on a Sunday eight years ago when they got saved and rededicated. I remember, I can remember when they called. And told us, man, it was a, it was a joyous occasion, and uh, wow, God has blessed them. God has blessed them tremendously, and uh, we we love them. And again, if we had if we wanted to have a daughter, that's who we'd want to have right there. So we love her and appreciate her so much. And they've grown in the Lord. You know, some people spend their whole life and never grow in the Lord, and they've grown so much. Eight years has it been? Eight years? Wow. Wow, just growing in the Lord. So thank you guys. We love you. That's my good news tonight, I guess, just to brag on y'all. But thanking them, pray for Rob and Diane. They're going to be leaving tomorrow. And pray they have a good, safe trip back. Don't forget the young adult out in on November the 11th. Hopefully, don't let somebody let, let me remember. I need to send out a message probably this week and let people know about that. So uh, that'll be on November the 11th. The baby shower for Brandy Sage will be on November the 18th here at the church at 4 o'clock. So you need to see Kathy, and she's going to need some help with that. If you can get involved with that, that, that would be great. And I just hit a button on my phone and got my phone messed up. That's, uh, that's, don't, you love, don't you love technology? Don't forget our Christmas dinner on the 15th. Uh, we'll be starting probably, probably in a, uh, not next week, probably the week after that with a, with a sign-up sheet, and hopefully we'll, we'll get a bunch of people there. I'd like to see us have about 75 or 80 people out for that easily. So you got family and friends you want to invite, invite. That's a great time for a witness and for a testimony. And if you want to bring somebody, just put on the on the sheet, the sign up sheet, so we'll know how many people's coming with you. Amen. Amen. And we're just excited about that. Excited about turning into that hog meat. Yeah. I tell you what. Well, I was a little bit scared tonight. Dennis had some some kind of food in a bag, and I don't know why I reached and grabbed it. And I, then I realized I saw Joe, not Joanne, Susan today had. The, the heart and the liver of that hog hauling it around outside out there and gave it to Evelyn and I don't know, man, and I thought, oh no, Evelyn's made something and that's, that's, that, that's that hog's heart. But uh, I had a guy tell me today, my, my friend, I don't know if you know this, uh, he said they used to take the liver out of a hog when he was growing up and made, made uh, no, the liver and make liver pudding. Anybody ever heard of that? Oh. Oh. Whew. And I'm not much of a liver person on anything. The only thing I'm, uh, the only liver I like is the living, living, liver. I like, I'm a liver, but wow. But, <laughs> boy, I've got them stirred up back there. They're going on about that. So uh, anyhow, anyhow, you want to know anything about that? See Susan. And uh, Susan fix you up on that. Amen? What's that thing called you make out, Haslet? Haslet. You got it down pat. I got it down pat now. I ain't never eat it, but I got it down pat. <laughs> Well, if you make it next time, just leave me off the list. <laughs> Joanne? I grant you, Dennis. Huh? I grant you, Dennis ain't got liver and hassle. Well, that might cause him to not be able to get out of the church with him. Man, don't tell, don't tell what you got, man. You know, I might get hungry. Somebody get hungry and attack you right here from the, from the church. But anyhow, hey, good to have everybody online out there. We're just having a good time at church. And, you know, people say, well, you know, you don't not have a good time at church. If I didn't have a good time at church, I wouldn't have a good time. Because that's, I mean, that's where I'm at most of the time. 
and I enjoy laughing and joking and on a Sunday night and, and you know we're not we're not really rushing against anything we're just kind of just being ourselves and uh, I like carrying on I like I love interaction I love to talk to people in the congregation and that's one thing I loved about the online ministry when I was right up close to them in the in the, in the screen being able to interact with them but we love our online members and ministry and appreciate them but anyhow we're gonna get ready to go to prayer tonight and don't forget little Logan is is uh, uh, sit around just have a good time absolutely that's what family's for uh, exactly I, I love that now you know you know you got you got people that come out of some of these more rigid stiffer religions that, that they don't like that but I like it I like the I like the down home family atmosphere of just being able to just to just you know I would say let her hair down and be herself but I don't have much to let down <laughs> But uh, anyhow, I like that. Don't you? Don't you like? You like the comfortable? I like. I think you. I think Christians come to church. I think that's a good point. I think we ought to be. I think we ought to be comfortable and talk. And I love to hear people visiting and talking. And you know, generally when we start the service, everybody's just chit chatting. And visit. I like that. And uh, you know, I hope we never. I hope we never get dead and dry. Right. Man, if we get dead and dry, we're in a mess. Amen. So, uh, yeah, let's just be family and enjoy that. So pray for Logan, who's had RSV and Mia and uh, AJ and, and all of them with, with Leanne. I think Leanne's working tonight, she said. And then Dixie's granddaughter, Olivia, is going to be having upcoming surgery. Uh, Andy's surgery is on December the 5th. Uh, Donna Tackett has been in the hospital. She's one of our online members. Uh, Tony Olson, that's... Uh, that's uh, uh, always get that's Shirley's nephew in law who had the heart cath who's having another stress test no he's having a heart cath on I got so much stuff I can't say it. he's having a heart cath on Tuesday and it's hard to believe after you already had that five bypasses just that what happened that's what been four or five months ago maybe no it hasn't been long has it so so pray for Tony that's got to be that's got to be difficult at this point brother Bill Floyd is having surgery on the seventh on his sinuses and uh, Andrew Glenn's grandson has found a new doctor and hopefully they get him straightened out Wanda's going to be a, uh, have another grandbaby they said or they're taking the baby on Halloween is that right Tuesday, Tuesday. so they're, they're We're going to be soon. We're going to be soon. So pray for, pray for them and pray for Reagan and, and the baby that everything will go well with them. Then Ronnie Sharpton had the stroke, and uh, I, I talked to Joanne and said she would talked to him today, and it wasn't a bad stroke, thank goodness. And, uh, boy, we just love Ronnie and uh, Susan and appreciate them. Mike Smith, Shirley and Barb's brother, is not doing well. Pray for him. Little Jackson, a two-year-old, had had the uh, uh, liver transplant. Wow, had to go back in for surgery, pray for him. And then Richard, Richard Helfenstein had a large tumor removed last Friday. And pray for Richard and then Shirley's brother. How's, your, how's Steve doing? Is he doing? It was pretty normal. It was what? Yeah, going to the emergency was just some normal thing that... So he's in good shape. He just had a knee replaced. That doesn't run in the family, does it? Yes, it does. Huh? Three of them. Uh, wow. So, man, it must run in the family then, but pray, pray for them. Then pray for Tammy Holbrook. Uh, Tammy and Shannon sit right here. Appreciate them. Uh, she had a prayer request. Her friend's son's got a bad diabetic foot. And, uh, boy, that can, uh, you know, uh, anybody that knows anything about diabetes knows where that can lead if things don't go well. So let's get started up tonight and get ready to pray. Major, you ready to come and pray tonight? Again, thank you for doing, doing a great job this morning. And uh, we'll, we'll get started up here just in a minute or two. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Great to see everybody out this evening here, back in the Lord's house again on Sunday night. Just had a uh, wonderful day here once again uh, with uh, my other parents. Uh, it's been such a blessing having them out here. We've uh, really enjoyed the, the family time and uh, time of fellowship, and uh, it's been great. Uh, we're hoping that uh, whenever they move uh, up here and be a few hours away, I hope they find them a place. I uh, told them it'd be nice to have them a, a few hours away instead of a few days away yeah. on the drive, so that'd be a blessing. So we're really hoping that, and then they'll... Want to pray for safe travels for them as they go up there, and then they'll be uh, going to 
uh, Virginia and Maryland to visit their brothers before heading back out west. So definitely want to pray for them for safe travels. But uh, great to see everybody out. Looking forward to another great service this evening. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come today with thankful hearts. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to be back in your house this evening. Father, we thank you for the service we had this morning. Dear Lord, everybody was out. Lord, thank you for uh, being with me and for my voice, Father, and be able to, to get me through it. Dear Lord, you're such a, a blessing, Father. You just provide our every need, Father. We thank you for all the blessings, dear Lord, that you give to us. Lord, we want to pray for the prayer request, dear Lord, tonight. All the ones that were mentioned, Father, and uh, all the ones that are on our uh, main uh, page on Facebook and that goes out via email, Father, ask that you'd reach down and touch every need, Father, as only you can, Lord. And uh, if it be your will, Father, pray that you'd heal these folks. But most importantly, dear Lord, pray that if anybody doesn't know you, that they'd come to know you. Father, because that's the most important decision ever. Dear Lord, we want to pray for uh, pray for Dad and the service, Father, as uh, he gets ready to, uh, to, to give the lesson, Lord, that you put on his heart, Father, and pray that you would uh, fill him with the Holy Ghost, Lord, and that uh, we wouldn't hear him, Lord, but that we would hear you flowing through him, Father, as he as he speaks your word, Father. Just pray that uh, help us to open up our heart, uh, hearts and mind and uh, put away any distractions that we have tonight, Lord, and be able to focus on you, Father. We want to hear from you, Lord. We want your spirit to come down, Lord, and pray that you would uh, just fill us, Father, with uh, the Holy Ghost, Lord, and pray that uh, if there anybody here this evening, whether that's uh, in the building or whether they're watching online, Lord, that doesn't know you as the Lord and Savior of their life, pray that uh, today would be the day that they say yes to Jesus before it's everlasting too late. Lord, we want to uh, continue to pray for America and our country, Lord. Pray that help us to turn our hearts to you, dear Lord, and help. Uh, we just want to see as many people saved as we can, dear Lord, before the rapture, Lord, because we know it's coming soon. Father, we want to pray for Israel, Lord, and your hand of protection upon them, Lord, ask that you'd help them. Father, help all those... Uh, you know, that are still hostages over there, Lord, and the families of those who have lost loved ones, Father, and pray for the protection of their soldiers. Lord, and pray for America. Help us to continue to support Israel, dear Lord. Pray that we'd never turn our back to Israel, Lord. Pray that we'd uh, continue to support uh, Israel, Father, and uh, however we can, Lord, and just give our leadership wisdom, Lord, to know what to do. And Lord, just uh, I want to pray for that uh, terrible uh, shooting up in Maine, Father. It happened to all the, the those that lost loved ones, those that are still in the hospital in critical condition, Lord, that should be with them. And then, uh, like the shooting that happened here in uh, Tampa last night, Father, uh, just terrible, Lord, just to be with those, Lord, I should be with those families and, and touch them, Father, and um, pray that uh, help uh, that you'd be able to to get some glory through this, dear Lord, pray that, uh, you know, people will come to know you through this, Father, come to know a personal relationship with Jesus, Father, because that's the most important thing anybody could ever have. Lord, and uh, again, Lord, just praise you for this church. Lord, we thank you for everybody that's came out tonight. I want to pray a special blessing for them, Father, and all of our brothers and sisters that are watching online. Lord, we just love them all, and we appreciate them all, Lord, and we love you, and we give you all the glory and honor and credit for everything, dear Lord, because uh, we know everything that we have comes from the hand of a holy and gracious and good God, Lord, and we just thank you, and we love you. Father, nonetheless, we ask not our will, but that your will be done in the holy, sweet, precious name of Jesus, we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Appreciate that. God bless you. God bless. Let me say here it is the last Sunday in October. That means October is the tenth month of the year, and that means we got two more months to go. And uh, two things about that. One, as we finish up Pastor Appreciation Month, thank everybody for being so good to us and and everything that you've done, every expression and everything that you've done. We appreciate it deeply, and and want you to know we appreciate you and love you. And then on that, we, we had Jonah here this morning. Did anybody know Jonah? Did anybody know him? He, uh, that was our visitor this morning, which gave us 11 or 10 months of, of visitors every Sunday in, in the year of 2023. So you need to get busy. Wouldn't it be great to finish the year out with a visitor every Sunday? So get busy and invite somebody here for the next week and get, get ready to get started on that. Amen. All right, here we go. You ready to go? Yeah. We All right, lesson number eight, Revelation in five R's, part number five of the rebellion. I remembered as I was studying today and getting ready for tonight, looking over uh, the PowerPoint, and at, you know, it's, it's hard for me to look over a lesson and, and look over PowerPoints without adding to it. That's the reason my lessons keep growing. And uh, a lot like me, I just keep growing. I had a I had a friend of mine today tell me, he said, boy, you're filling those fishing shirts out real well on, uh, on the program. And I won't say what Brother Bill did to me a while ago. But uh, anyhow, I said, well, I said, you, fat people don't have wrinkles in their face. I said, notice how smooth my face is. So, uh, but anyhow, as I, I don't know why I said that. But anyhow, <laughs> anyhow while, while I was studying, preparing for the lesson this, this afternoon, I remember what the major said back when we got ready to go into this into this study. He said, "Won't you do a, a verse by verse study?" Yeah. 
And uh, I, I said, well, I don't really want to do that. Man, that's e- exhaustive. It's long. And, but I'm really slowed, I've really slowed down in the sixth chapter of Revelation and uh, really just taking my time. Now, once we get over the next few weeks and into the, uh, past the seal judgments and get into the trumpet and the bowl judgments, we'll move a little bit faster. We've probably got a couple, two or three more lessons on, on the tribulation, the rebellion, and then we'll be moving right on into the, what's the next thing on God's prophetic time clock? I mean, after, after the tribulation? What's, what's after the tribulation? The return. The return. If I would have done this right here, if I'd have given you that right there, I said, what's, what's after that? You, you could have figured it out, right? But anyhow, we're, so, but anyhow, we're slowing down on these, on these seals because we want to review them a little bit and talk about them again tonight. Of course, here's our, here's our timeline. I made you a new timeline this week. I'm going to show you in a minute and uh, see if it'll help you. But I'm going to just skip by this one. You've got this one. Here's your new one if you want to take a picture of this one right here. And I thought, well, that's, a picture's worth a thousand words. So I kind of made this one. And this is a 7,000-year timeline that I gave you. We had 4,000 years of Old Testament history. And then we have, you know what this is, the cross. And then we have the church age, little white church. Boy, I like the little white church, don't you? How many people remember those from the country days? Amen. Oh, a lot of folks. Yeah, yeah. So we've been 2,000 years into the church age. And then the clouds represent the next thing is the rapture of the church. And then we're on talking about the seven-year tribulation right here. And then here this big red line coming down will be the return. And then a thousand years in the millennial kingdom. And then in the, you had eternity on this side, eternity past, and eternity on this side. God, God's not limited or hindered or captured by time, element, or matter, or space. He's outside of that. So this 7,000-year timeline, I believe, personally believe, myself, that that's going to be wrap it up. Now, if that's going to wrap it up, if I'm right, there's a chance I may not be right. But if I'm wrong, I'll be wrong with a lot of good people. Amen. Amen. If we're on a 7,000-year timeline and the next scheduled event on, the, on God's prophetic time clock is the rapture, then we're right about right here. Yeah. We're at the end. We've already been almost, almost. you got to remember, the calendars have changed. From the old, old, old Hebrew calendar, Old Testament calendar, the Gregorian calendar, the Julian calendar. So we might be, we may have lost or gained or added to over this time, but we're right at about 2,000 years. Figured any way you want to use anybody's calendar you want to use, we're at about the 2,000 year mark. So if that be the case, then the rapture would be the next scheduled thing. And it could be at the time. The rapture is imminent, right? means it could happen today, it could happen tonight, it could happen any time. And man, as you look out across the horizon and realize what's going on in the world, you got to realize, man, be like John said as we get into the end of Revelation, even so come quickly. Amen. I was talking to somebody today and they said, man, if the rapture happened today, I said, it wouldn't bother me if it happened right now. Amen. Used to sing that old song years ago. You probably know this song. I don't know, Pat, you'll probably know it, but I'll see you in the rapture. Remember that song? I see you in the rapture. Man, that's a, wasn't that a good one? And, uh, you know, I tell people, we, I'll either meet you here, there, or in the sky, up there. Amen? Because we're going up someday. But I thought that timeline, I wanted to make you that one, put the picture on there, uh, and give you, do you like the timelines? Does that help you get a picture of just kind of see where we are and, and see where we are? So, okay, remember the first, last week we talked about the four uh, seals, the first four seals that were opened up out of the book of, of him. God had that book in the throne and nobody could open it up and Jesus stepped up and the line of the tribe of Judah opened that book and it was sealed with seven seals. We opened four of them already. Remember that? They're called the four horsemen of the apocalypse. How many people have ever heard that? The four horsemen of the apocalypse. And uh, so think about that right there. And then remember they, those four horsemen had a white horse, a red horse, a black horse and a pale horse. Now, if you if you look up, if you go back and look up, that pale horse was probably you know you know they portrayed Clint Eastwood on a on a white horse, pale horse. But it was almost if you read and study, it's probably almost like a puke color. I'm just being honest with you. I'm mean, I'm just being honest with you, and it and it ought to be a puke color, amen. Because death and hell wrote on that. 
And so you remember the white horse, let's see if we can remember, let's have a little test tonight. Everybody at one time, who was on the white horse, number one? The Antichrist, very good. The red horse represented war, not war, war. And the, the, the black horse rep represented famine. Black horse represented famine. And, the, and then the red, uh, the pale horse symbol, symbolized and stood for death and hell followed on that. So that you see a natural progression. Let me stop and say this. I've said this several times, but I'm going to say it again tonight. Here's where we get rightly divided in the Word of God. 2 Timothy 2.15. Study the soul that show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed. Rightly divided in the Word of truth. If you go back and read Matthew chapter 24, after you get up into those, those, those few verses, when Jesus really gets into the heart of the Olivet Discourse, it follows this progression right here. Jesus talked about wars. He talked about that. He talked about don't be deceived. He talked about don't let anybody deceive you. He talked about that white horse. He talked about war that would be coming, kingdom against kingdom, nation against nation. He talked about famine and pestilences. Am I right? I mean, he talked about all those things, and that's why you got to realize when you're reading the Gospels, if you don't rightly divide and put it in the right place, you'll get confused. Matthew 24 was talking about the tribulation period. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, good. So remember that by the time we get to the fourth seal, the pale horse, that 25% of the population of the world has already been destroyed, dead. I don't know, and I don't think anybody knows how, now, you know, the, and there's a timeline, and I, maybe I'll make one up and show you. I don't know the progress, I do know the progression. I don't know how fast these horses are going to come one after another. But I can tell you, we're, in the, we're, we're on seal number four, and we've still got three more to go, and then seven trumpet judgments and seven bowl judgments, and we're seeing one quarter of the remaining population of the world destroyed. It doesn't sound like to me a very good time, amen? So tonight, we're going to talk about the fifth seal. Let me give you the verses. You ready? The fifth seal deals with this topic right here, the martyred saints under the altar in heaven. So now hang on. I'm, I hope I can help you out as we go through this tonight. Verse number 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Verse number 10. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Wow, that's pretty heavy stuff. And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest for a little season until their fellow servants and also their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they that's a typo, as they as hey were, as they were were, should be fulfilled. These souls that John saw under the altar in heaven are those tribulation saints that have been killed during the tribulation. They've been martyred. You know what I mean? You know what a martyr is, right? A martyr is someone who dies for their faith. Who was the first New Testament? I'll give you a test. Who was the first New Testament martyr? Stephen. Who? Stephen. 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 We read about him in the book of Acts. And he was the first one that we read about in the New Testament. So the John saw, seal number five opens up. This man, this... There's a lot in this, and I'm just going to have to just kind of hit the surface and skim along, and you're going to have to hang on. I hope you're reading before and after and in between and listen to this because, I mean, there's some really heavy stuff in there, what John saw. So let's try to dive into it and see what we can find out. First of all, it tells us that apparently there are going to be many people saved during the tribulation. Next week in chapter 7, we get there. Next week, chapter 7 is what they call a parenthetical chapter. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a parenthesis. You know, when you put something in parentheses, yeah. parentheses, you're just putting something there to help tell what this is. 
The church age was in the parentheses here, the 2,000 years. And that was really, that was hidden from back here. So in the parentheses, we see the church age, and that's given to help us explain that time. When you put something, you offset that in parentheses, it gives you more explanation of what the subject matter is talking about. Does that make sense? So I'm trying to, I'm trying to help you as we get into that. So next week, we'll be talking about chapter 7, which is a parenthetical chapter. And that, that's, just, that's just kind of just what it is. It's giving us insight about how those people are saved. In the tri- people are going to be saved during the tribulation. In fact, let me stop right here and say, we've got a lot of people saying today we're going to have a great end times revival. Well, it's a yes and no. It's not in it's this dispensation, but it will be an end times revival in the tribulation. Probably the greatest revival the world's ever known is going to happen during the tribulation period. So there's going to be a lot of people going to be saved during the tribulation. Now you'll find out next week. We'll talk more about that as time goes on about who these people are. But they're going to be multitudes. In fact, chapter 7 said, John said, I saw a number coming out that no man could number. And said, who are these? And they, they said, these are days that came out of great tribulation. So these people that John saw in chapter number 6 in the fifth seal are those people that had been martyred, that had been killed, and that, that had accepted Jesus during the tribulation period. Does that make sense? Yes. So don't miss next week. That was just a preview. Many people that are going to be saved during the tribulation will be martyred. I, I, I would say most. I don't know. I, I'm, I, I don't know if that's an accurate statement, but many people, maybe most of the people that get saved during that tribulation period, will end up. The Antichrist will be doing everything he can to kill them. Now, everybody that gets saved will not be martyred, because there's got to be some of them left to go into the into the millennial kingdom in a natural body. You and I be coming back, but I didn't, this is going to get heavy on you, and I shouldn't be doing this to you. You and I be coming back going into the kingdom in a spiritual body. Amen. But there will be people that will survive the, the tribulation that will enter in into, into the millennial kingdom, and they will have children, and for that thousand-year period of time, the explosion is going to just, and population is going to explode. When you, take away, when you take away basically all, all the pain, all the suffering, all the sickness, you take away all those things, Jesus is going to be ruling with, with a, a rod of iron. When somebody gets out of line, he's just going to deal with it. It's not going to be, not going to be all this long, drawn-out court process and all that stuff. No, it's going to be justice. It's going to be handled immediately. So the population is going to just really explode, and they've got to be somebody, because you and I coming back in spiritual bodies, we're not going to be procreating the world. Our procreating days are over. So don't worry about coming back. So, man, I don't want to come back and go through that. You don't have to go through that. You don't have to worry about being, in, being uh, bearing children or anything like that during, during the millennial kingdom. But anyhow, many of those who are saying, uh, how many lost is a termite and a yo-yo right now? Be honest with me. About two people raising their hand. Okay, hang on. It'll get, it'll get worse before it gets better. Now let me come back to where we are tonight. I always want to jump ahead and show you because I know Joanne asked a good question a couple weeks ago on two, I think it was Tuesday morning truths about that because, you know, we talk about spiritual bodies and, and physical bodies. And when I say a, a spiritual body, it's a body like the Lord. Once we die, we get a resurrected spiritual body, a glorified body. We will not be, it will not be subject to this, this body. It won't die. It can't die. It won't get sick. It can't. It'll be a body like unto the resurrected Jesus Christ. But there will be people who will live through the tribulation that will enter into the millennial in a physical body and procreate. And people will be born. And then those people will have a chance to accept or reject Jesus. Everybody has to make a personal choice. Nobody gets a pass unless you're a baby or you're not capable of doing that. Everybody that's got mental capacity of age, you have to make a choice. That's just the way, sorry, that's just the way it is, amen? So many people who are, now how many confused? I feel like I'm just running like a, I, I feel like, you know, I was thinking of the major today preaching. He's like an, he's like an old big old rabbit dog. He gets on his text and stays there. I'm like a young big old dog. I just go everywhere. 
So I'm just running everywhere. I'm just running the muck right here tonight. And uh, if you're confused, hang on over the next 25 lessons or so. We'll try to get you straightened back out. Amen. But it's a great, man. It's a great, Revelation is a, it's great. When you understand what all is going to happen and how this thing's going to play, it's wonderful. And I, the problem is, it, it kind of is, is it, you know, I get excited and I want to I want to jump from here over to there. I want to get out of the tribulation, get into the millennial kingdom, because it's going to be so grand and glorious. But we got to get through this period right here. So hang on with me, will you? People that are saved and martyred will have their souls and spirits go to heaven. Typo, man. I always generally capitalize heaven when I'm when I write heaven, the Bible, the Word. I almost always use a capital Amen. W, H, B. I see I left it made heaven with John R. Rice wrote in his books when he was writing about heaven. John R. Rice capitalized heaven. And the publisher sent it back and said, you, that's a mistake. You don't capitalize heaven. He said, is Dallas, Texas a place? They said, yes, it is. He said, is Miami, Florida a place? Yes, it is. Is Denver, Colorado? I don't know what all he said, but he's several cities. I'm just kind of helping you out there. Denver, Colorado. He said, yes, it is. He said, then heaven's a place. It needs to be. It should be capitalized, too. It's not a thought or a figment or a little H. It's a capital H. It's a place. Amen? So I need to change it. But people that are saved, wow, well, pray. Man, I'm just, I feel like I need to stop and start over. People that are saved during this tribulation period that will lose their life will automatically their souls and spirits will go to heaven just like you and I today. Major did a great job this morning talking about the body, the soul, and the spirit. Plants are a one-fold being. They have a body. You can break them off. You can jerk the flowers off of them. I've never heard one holler, ouch. I've never seen one pout on you. I've never seen one shed a tear. I've never seen, they, you know, because they're a single-fold being. They have a body. You and I have a body, right? As my brother-in-law said, if I knew I was going to live this long, I would have taken better care of the one I got. We probably can all agree to that. Animals are a two-fold being. They have a body, and they have a soul. If soul is your feelings, your senses. You, you grab one by the tail, it's going to bite you. You yell at one, they'll just, they'll just hunker down. They get mad, they might just take a big chunk out of your face. They have a will of their own. Sometimes you can break them. I turned around and said to Brother Bill, someone said, Cats, you can, I don't know if cats can you do anything with the will of a cat or not. Can you? I mean, I, I, mean, you know, I, just, I just say that because Bill's got Bubba, and he loves Bubba. He loves Bubba like Bubba's his own child. But cats are stubborn. I mean, they're hard to deal with. And, uh, but they've got a will. Would you, would you agree that he got, he, Bubba's got his own will, but he does what he wants to do? By the way, he's the head of the house. Now, can I safely say that? Bubba is the king of the house down there. Now, you think Marge is? Marge is second in command. You say, where's Brother Bill? Well, you figure it out. <laughs> Bubba, Marge, and Bill. But anyhow, so, you know, it'd be, it'd be, there's no way you could down there and see, but Bubba slap a far out of you. I mean, you say, he'll, he'll, man, he loves, he loves blonde hair. So if you go down, wear a wig. If you got blonde, he loved, man, he'll just grab Kathy's hair, slap her, and he, he, he got a will. Dogs like that. They just got, had to put their dog down. Lacey, man, hey, she, was, she was like a family member. They, they, listen, they've got, they've got a body and they've got a spirit. We've got a body. You, you, you say something to me, I'm going to get I'm gonna, a soul. Thank you. They have a body and a soul. And, uh, you know, I've got a body and a soul. My feelings get hurt. I say things. I've got emotions. You don't think that? Cut me off in traffic. And, uh, man, you know, well, we've got emotions. So we've got a body and a soul. We're twofold being. And there's, on, there's only one thing that's got a threefold being that's made in the likeness and image of Almighty God. God consists of. Boy, I'm getting well. I'm, I'm, I'm piggybacking on your sermon. God is, 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 is a trinity. God the Father, not, not three gods, one God consisting of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. You're one person consisting of, you could have put that right into that sermon today. I thought you were going that way. You're one person consisting of body, soul, and spirit. Amen. No dog, much as you love your dog, much as you love your cat, much as you love your animal, dogs do not have a God part in them. 
I know you'll be waiting at the door to talk about that at the end of the service. I'm just being honest with you. You say, well, animals being heavy. I, you know, I believe animals made. I don't know if yours will be there or not. I don't know if yours were saved or not. But, you know, you know, I don't know. I don't know. You know, people always want to say, my dog or my cat's gone. I don't know. I don't know about that. The, the, really, I, I really doubt that. But, I, but there will be animals in heaven. I believe there will be animals in heaven. Maybe your animals will be there. I don't, that's one of those subjects that I, I really can't give you a definitive answer. But if I had to guess, I'd say probably not. Because they don't have a spirit part of them. You and I have a part that longs to get back to God. I ain't never seen a dog want to go to church. I guarantee you Susan strung that hog up out there. I bet it, they know why that hog saying, well, I want to pray before you kill me. They no way. They don't have they don't have anything in them that wants to draw them back to God. Amen. Animals and plants were not made in the likeness of God. Amen. You and I were made in the likeness and the image of God. We were made, you are a threefold being just as God is a, th a threefold God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, your body, soul, and spirit. Amen. Amen. So when these people When these people that are saved during the tribulation get martyred, then their souls and spirits are going to go to heaven. When we die today, as a Christian, where do we go? Our soul and spirit goes on. Major said this morning, you can't kill the soul and spirit. Right. It's, a, it's in, you say, I'm going to kill, you can't kill me. Right. All you can do is separate this body from the soul and the spirit, but the soul and spirit's going to live on. Amen. It's never going to die. Amen. Think about it, never going to die. It's going to either live in heaven Oh, it's going to live in the lake of fire forever and ever and ever. Amen. God created you, created you in his image. Amen. Let us make man in our image. Amen. We're made after the likeness and the image of Almighty God. Yeah. And we're not going to, we, you can't destroy that. Right. You're going to live on somewhere. So these people that are killed for about the 25th time, during the tribulation, their soul and their spirit's going to go to heaven. Are we good with that? Yes. Good. Let me move on. Get off that. They'll receive resurrected bodies at an upcoming future resurrection before entering the millennial kingdom. There's going to be another resurrection. And you want me to teach verse by verse? I can't even hit the big stuff. It's so big. At the rapture, there's going to be a resurrection. Remember that? Yeah. The people that will be resurrected, resurrected, resurrects. <laughs> so what do you do when you don't know what to do? You take a pause, you pray, and you get a drink of water. And hopefully that you love your pastor, you're praying too. Where was I? People... What, what was it? People that are resurrected. You know, sometimes it wasn't so funny. You just have to, you just, you, you just cry. You know what? Remember, I went to speech school three years. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to fall back on having to go to speech school three years. Anytime I, can't, I get tongue-tied, I'm going to fall back on that. I'm going to try it one more time. You know, you could have stayed home tonight. You, would, you wouldn't have got this entertainment at the house, so. You didn't get a nap today. Hey, that might, that might be what it is right there. Good idea. Have a nap every Sunday. I'm going to try it one more time. I might have to have the major come up and say it for me. People that will be resurrected at the rapture are church age saints. Amen. Old Testament saints, some of them were resurrected when Jesus was resurrected. The Bible said many of the bodies of saints which slept arose and came out of the, out the graves were seen of many. Not all of them. There's going to be a resurrection of Old Testament saints before the millennial kingdom. Amen. At that resurrection, when those Old Testament saints are brought back together with their body and soul, and they're, they're reunited with their body, 
these tribulation saints who have been killed during this seven-year period of tribulation, and their soul and spirits in heaven, they're going to be resurrected and get their glorified body when they're resurrected. Does that make sense? You can say, and I, I used to believe this. I used to believe in a general resurrection. Did anybody, was anybody, did anybody grow up believing in a general resurrection? Major de- general resurrection. Just believe, every, you know, be one general, general resurrection. Everybody be resurrected at the same time, but that's not true. I've just told you. In fact, I could probably tell you about four or five of them real fast if you want to know about it, but that'd be for another lesson. Maybe I'll teach on that. Maybe I can get it better than this one. But anyhow, those folks will be resurrected before entering into the kingdom. Amen. Now, for people who do not understand how terrible the tribulation is going to be, they say things like this. You know, people say, well, you know, I'm just, I'm just going to hang out and wait. I'm not going to get saved now. I'm going to live my life the way I want, and, and I'm going to wait. And during the tribulation, I'm going to just go ahead and get saved. Well, there are a couple of problems with that. Number one is, you know, when you say, I'm going to wait and get saved during the tribulation, you might not be able to be saved during the tribulation. Amen. There are two trains of thoughts on that. If you've had the opportunity to be saved and you've heard a clear presentation of the gospel and you've rejected the gospel and you've said no to the truth and no to the Spirit of God, then you're not, you're not going to have a chance to be saved during the tribulation. Your chance is over. So people say, I'll just wait. That's, that's, boy, that's, that's skating on thin ice, amen? And then they don't, the other people, they don't have a clue that many of those people that do get saved during the tribulation are going to be killed. They're going to be martyred. You can't, listen, you, you, I, it's just so difficult to believe that people in the age of grace is hard to get people saved right now when it costs you absolutely nothing. Amen. There's nobody standing at the altar with a big axe and say, if you get saved, we're going to cut your head off. Well, wouldn't that be a great altar call? Hey, we're going to have an altar call. You come and get saved, and while you're praying, we're going to cut your head off. I doubt if anybody would ever come to an altar. We're living in the age of grace. It doesn't cost us anything to be saved. Jesus paid it all. But there's a great possibility that in the tribulation, when you get saved and you go directly against the Antichrist, if he can possibly do it, he's going to kill you. It's going to cost you life. Jesus trying to save you to give you life. I don't want to get on Israel. Gaza's going to be a dust bowl by the time they get done. And they've given them every opportunity to do them. And it's sad. But Hamas is keeping people there and using them as human shields. Let, let, me, say, can, can, let me say to all the sympathy, we stand with Israel. Hamas invaded Israel and went across the borders and broke it down, went in there and killed all those 1,400 and some people, many of them women and children and babies. Sad. And Israel dropped pamphlets. They've given them, what, all three weeks just about get out, get, almost like the gospel message. Get out, get out, get out. We're coming. We're coming. We're lined up at the border. We're coming. And yet they couldn't get out. It's sad. Jesus stands today saying, you can come and be saved today and you can live for me. And then you can live forever and eternity. And yet you can't, you, it, it's like pulling hen's teeth to try to get people to get saved today because they got all these reasons why they won't be saved. But yet we're going to wait until the tribulation and get saved. Oh, hogwash on that. Now you might tell yourself that and believe that, but I don't believe that for a minute. You, people that won't get saved in the age of grace, but yet they're going to get saved in the tribulation, when you, if, if it's at all possible, you're going to be martyred? Nah. Nah, if you believe that, you've been sold a bill of goods that, that you shouldn't believe. Amen? Let me say it again. Believers during the tribulation will be severely persecuted. That's what Satan's going to be doing. He's going to be trying to hunt everybody down. You say, well, I don't think they can find me. Listen, they know exactly where you are today. The government's got enough technology to know everything about you today. There was just a few months ago, you couldn't even go to a store and get on a plane or go across the state line or go somewhere if they didn't have record of you having a you-know-what. 
Am I right? And they knew who had the you-know-what, too. And they knew who didn't. Amen. And let me say once again, when they asked me, did you ever have the you-know-what? I said, I didn't have the you-know-what. And I don't want the you-know-what. There might come a time when you might want but I don't want it. I don't want, I don't want anything like that. You know, if you had it, God bless you. That's up to you. And if you lived through it, you ought to take about three laps around the church right here tonight. Amen. I've got to be careful because I got censored on YouTube for talking like that one time. Hopefully they can't pick up my code talk. <laughs> they censored me for being, what do they call it, mis, mis, misinformation on medical issues. So I'm not talking about medical issues. Just in case you're listening tonight on Facebook and YouTube, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about, I'm talking about the tribulation period. Amen? Amen? That's why we should be evangelistic today. We should not want any of our family and friends to be left behind. It's another reason why we should study prophecy. Prophecy causes us. People say, well, it really doesn't matter about how it ends in the end. Well, it may not matter to you, but it does cause us to be more evangelistic. Amen. As you're going through this study on Revelation, you realize how bad the tribulation will be. If that doesn't cause you to want to be evangelistic, I don't know what would. When you see what your family and your friends are going to be left behind to face and the end of the thing in the lake of fire, if that won't cause you to want to talk to your family, I don't know what will. Amen. You can't sit through a lesson on prophecy and end time events and not want to go out here and tell somebody, boy, you need to get saved. Now, they can get mad, they can blow up, they can, get, they can, they can fuss, cuss, pat, do what they can do. Whatever. But listen, our job is to tell them. Amen. Amen. Notice some things in these verses. I got to hustle. It's almost time to go. John saw their soul. He saw their souls. I ain't never seen a soul. Major said today you can't see a soul. I see evidence of a soul. I hear you. You know, you say things to me and, and you touch me and grab me. I, I see evidence of a soul. You know what the Bible said? said John saw their souls. John was called up into heaven to see these things that would happen in the last time. And he looked under the altar. I mean, think, think about a place of safety and a being for these people who have been martyred and killed. They were under the altar there of Jesus Christ, man. And listen, he said, I saw their souls. You ain't never seen no soul. But John saw them. Not only that, he heard their cry. They were crying out. I mean, think about that. These people that had been martyred were crying out under the altar. And I'm going to show you what they were crying out. <laughs> this, they, they, not only that, they knew what was happening on earth. Amen. People say, well, I don't know people dying and going to heaven know what's going on on earth. I wouldn't be so sure about that. Amen. I really wouldn't be so, I can't be definitive about that. Sometimes I think mama might be standing looking over the balcony of heaven and saying, boy, that's my boy right there. Amen. Go get him, son. I, I don't know if that is or not. Maybe it does, maybe not, but I, I can tell you that I can guarantee you by the word of God in the tribulation that those saints that were killed and martyred, that their soul and spirit had gone on to be with heaven, knew exactly what was going on on earth. Amen. And they didn't pray like Jesus prayed. In the church age, where we're living, Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. The tribulation saints didn't pray that. They didn't pray that. They didn't pray like Stephen prayed in Acts chapter 7. Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. They didn't pray that. You say, what they do? <laughs> Listen, they're not under the dispensation of grace. They're in the tribulation period. That timeline, they get, when the rapture happens, the dispensation of grace is over. And they're living under the tribulation, man. And I tell you what, you know what they begin to cry out? They were crying out for vengeance. How long? How long? We've been killed. We've been slain. We've been martyred. The Antichrist is just running, doing his thing on earth. How much longer before something happens? And Jesus said, it's a little while. He'll take care of it, amen? amen. He'll take care of your problems too, amen? amen. These, the, remember, these are martyrs that have been slain since the rapture of the church. The sixth seal. Boy, we've got to get into that. We've got about eight minutes to get into that. Here's the sixth seal that was opened up. A great earthquake. Wow. Jesus talked about that in Matthew 24. Am I right? Go back and read that. Matthew 24. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. Now listen, listen to this. 
By the way, these seven judgments are coming from the hand of Almighty God. Amen. This has nothing to do with the Antichrist. Antichrist running loose, killing people, martyring people. But I'll tell you what, God is in control. Amen. And he's releasing these seven judgments on the world. 13. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed like a scroll when it's rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the, listen to this, and the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man hid themselves in the dens and rocks of the mountain. Listen to this verse coming up right here. And said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us! And hide us from the face of him that setteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Verse 17, for the great day of his wrath has come, and who shall be able to stand? I don't know if that's a rhetorical question, but I'm going to answer it for you. No one. No one. During that day, no one will be able to stand. Notice some things about that. When the six seals open, the earth begins to rock and reel, man, just reel and rock. You're talking about a shaking and the making. And you're talking about a scary time. Well, they're talking about the rich people, the proud people, the leaders, presidents, politicians, the elite, the most elite people you talk about are going to begin to cry out to the rocks and to the mountains to fall on them and hide them from the Lamb of God. I tell you what, that's going to be a pretty scary time. Amen. Kings, political leaders, millionaires, proud, mighty, and people begin to cry out, and people would never shed a tear. People never cried out to God. People don't even believe in God. People don't believe the Bible. Listen, they're going to cry out in that day. When that earthquake happens, it's going to be so bad, they're going to begin to cry out, that they, they, they hide them in the rocks and the mountains, fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sits on the throne, the wrath of the Lamb. God's wrath is, can I just give you just a little, Tidbit of advice, God's wrath has just about got to be filled up. Amen. 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 Amen? I don't know how much more it can hold. Right. All pride, arrogance, shaking their fist in the face of God is going to be gone. It's going to be gone. You say, who, they, who, who will they cry out and, and want to be hidden from? They're not saying hide us from the Antichrist. They're not saying hide us from Satan. They're not saying hide us from our neighbor. Hide us from the government, hide us from the politicians, hide us from the army. You know who they're crying out to be hidden from? Listen, they're crying out to be hid from Jesus Christ, from the wrath of the Lamb. Amen. Listen, folks, you don't realize it today. We're living in the day of grace. God loves you. God wants to see you saved. Jesus died that whosoever will can be saved. But there's coming a day when his wrath is going to be turned into into this world, and man, I'm going to tell you what, it's not going to be a pretty sight, amen? amen. Think about that. Do you notice anything strange about that cry? They were crying. Think about that. They, they, were not, they, weren't even, they weren't even crying out for forgiveness. So I'm going to get saved during the tribulation. These people didn't cry out for forgiveness. They've just, they've just seen the Antichrist. They've seen war. They've seen famine. They've seen death and hell. They've seen all these things happen. They've seen a quarter of the population of the earth destroyed. And they, then they see this great earthquake. And not one time did the Bible say they're asking Jesus to forgive them. But I'm going to wait and be saved during the tribulation. Yeah. Yeah. Sure you are. You know, there comes a, Pat asked a question last Tuesday morning. Or, no, it wasn't. How did we get on that? But, you know, talking about, I think it's how we got on that. The unpardonable sin is the continual rejection of the Holy Spirit of God. God is loving. God is patient, God is seeking, God is wanting to save everybody, but there's going to come a time, there comes a time when you can go too far. And you'll go, I don't, I don't hear God. 
uh, there's no speaking anymore. There's no knocking at my heart's door. These people here, man, was crying out. They weren't crying out for forgiveness. Listen, if you're not saved and rapture ready, if you have, listen, if you haven't died, you'll be left to go through the reign of the Antichrist and all these judgments that Jesus is pouring out on the world. It doesn't, sound like God, this, it doesn't sound like the God and Jesus that the liberals and the modernists talk about. The progressives preach, oh, God is a God of love. He is a God of love. But as we're talking about the attributes of God, He's also a God of just, justice and judgment and righteousness and holiness. Let's don't get wrapped. Let's just don't get hung up on. I feel, I feel like I'm back in the 70s and a flyer child and I got psychedelic clothes on and flyers hanging in my hair. Listen to the Credence Clearwater Revival. You knew it was coming, didn't you? You could see it coming, couldn't you? I won't say why that came. Some people know. Let me talk about, you know, like some, like some flyer child. It, uh, love, love. Listen, folks, we're in, we're in the dispensation of love. We're in the dispensation of grace. But there's also a day of wrath that's coming on unsaved people. Amen. They don't want, you listen, they don't know anything about that because nobody wants to preach. Again, how long has it been since you've heard, not counting me, that you've heard somebody preach on hell? I had a lady just sent me a message last week, 70-some years old, and said, thank you for preaching on hell. I have never heard a preacher preach on hell. 70-some years old. Well, I feel like I'm blessed. I grew up, that's where that's on a topic they seem like as every sermon, that's the only thing they preached on was hell. Amen. They preached on hell was hot, and hell was eternal, and hell was long, and hell was damnation, and hell was brimstone. But no, today we don't want to preach on that. Oh, God's a God of love. Yeah, he is. He loved you enough to send his son to die for you. Well, I'll tell you what, if you reject that, you reject that, you're going to be on the wrong side, man, of God. Amen? Man, listen, I love to brag about my son and his preaching. And I tell you what, you won't get under my skin, you criticize him to me. And I tell you what, it won't be a very pleasant thing. You imagine how God feels when you're critical of his son, Jesus Christ, that died on the cross at Calvary. Amen? I mean, think about that, man. However, this is, <laughs> we're talking about this is the God of the Bible. The God of the Bible, man, is the God of judgment. Amen? And the question was asking, who, who shall be able to stand? And that day, who shall be able to stand? Nobody. Again, it doesn't sound like the liberals that they love, love, love. Listen, I, man, listen. <laughs> I don't know how much more you can love somebody and to tell them there's eternal hell waiting on them if they don't get saved. Amen. And by the way, I don't think it's really love when you don't tell to people about an eternal hell. Right, right. Right. If there's a rattlesnake out there between those two doors and I say, well, I hope nobody gets bitten when they go out. I'm not going to tell them. Maybe they can sneak by it. That doesn't sound like love to me. Right. What about ten big gators laying out there? <laughs> Slobber run out of their mouth. Claws just clawing the carpet out out there. Hadn't been fed in about two weeks. And I look out there and I say, boy, ah, maybe they can just tiptoe by them and nobody ever know anything about it. That doesn't sound like love to me. It doesn't sound like love to me when you raise your kids and they say, I want to I go out and play in the middle of the road, Daddy. Okay, honey, just, 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 just go on out and stay in the yellow line. That doesn't sound like love to me. It sounds like I'm going to grab them and jerk a knot in the rear end. and say, what's wrong with you? You could you don't play in the middle of the road. I love you. I'm glad I was raised up by daddy. Just jerked a knot on your rear end. Amen. I'm glad when you did wrong. Hey, he, hey, listen. I knew that he loved me. Worked every day. Provided for me. I knew that he loved me. He told me he loved me. But I'm going to tell you what. I knew he loved me enough. He wouldn't want me to do something that's going to be crazy out there. Right. You love people. You want to tell them about the truth. This ain't love. This stuff that you're here on TV... I just saw a commercial yesterday, had him on it. And I told Kathy, I said, that sounds, boy, don't that sound so good? Just call my prayer line and my app, and I'm going to tell you how you can have such a successful life. And I thought, wow, maybe I ought to call it up. <laughs> Folks, it's not love 
when you don't love people enough to tell them the truth. Amen. Remember some of these stories we're talking about these battles, World War II, and the battles y'all went in. When the, when the major got ready to be deployed over to Iraq, you know what they told him? Can I tell what they told him? And I can't remember it all, but boy, it shook me down to my toenails. He had to make his plans. He had to get his affairs in order. He had to make sure, he had to make his funeral, he had to make sure everything's in because you might not come back. These guys got off that boat, man, over there, D-Day in Normandy. These guys have stormed those beaches, man. They didn't sugarcoat them and said, well, y'all, you'll be back tomorrow. You know what they told them? You probably won't come back. You probably won't be back. You ain't going to survive. He said, boy, that's bad talk. No, that's truthful talk. And I'm going to say to you tonight, you ain't going to survive without Jesus. So that takes us through chapter 6 and that finishes up chapter 6. Next week is a parenthetical. Remember, that's a, it's, an, it's an interlude. It helps us understand and gives us some insight about these people that are saved during the tribulation. And you'll be, you're going to be shocked to find out how they're going to be saved. I don't know how people are going to be saved. God's got that all taken care of. You come back next week and we'll tell you. Amen? Let's stand. Miss Jean, get ready to sing. If you're here tonight and you're not saved, you know what I do? You know what I do? I believe I'd get saved. If I wasn't right, I believe I'd get right. I believe I'd just pray a prayer and say, Dear God, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me for doubting you. Forgive me for not coming to you sooner. And today, the best I know how, I'm going to trust Jesus to save me. I don't listen. I don't want to face the wrath of God. Thank God I'm not going to face it. Amen. But if you're not saved, you're going to face the wrath of God. Right. Maybe you ought to come. Maybe some of the church ought to come and pray, man. I keep I telling you, man, listen, you got family that's unsaved. you got people that's not, not, not going to make it through. Man, listen, they're going to go into the tribulation. If you don't tell them about Jesus, man, we need to be evangelistic. Amen. We need to finish this year out well. God has blessed us. Let's continue to invite people and tell them about Jesus. While we sing tonight, would you come? Bless me not, O oh gentle Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Savior, Savior, Hear my humble cry, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Let me at thy throne of mercy find a sweet relief. Kneeling there in deep contrition, help my unbelief. Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, Please don't pass me by. I don't know if that's it or not. One more verse? Can we? Thank you for loving me tonight. As you see, I'm hard to love because when I got so tongue-tied tonight, I didn't think I was going to get that thing untied. And, man, I think Rob might be right. It may be because I didn't have a nap, man. I'm, because that means I need to have a nap every Sunday. Remind me every Sunday morning, you need to take a nap before you get back. I was a, I was a mess. I would apologize for it, but they, they, listen, that's just me. You know, and I just do the best I can. And thank you for loving me. Would you, would, would thank you for loving me. Miss Diane, come over if you would. Miss Diane got baptized this morning. She got baptized, been saved, and, and she's going home. And, and she wants to become an online member of our church and... And boy, she's been online and been faithful. And Miss Diane, we love you love and you thank you so being much. A part of it, it's really enjoyable. Amen. I'm Remember, Freedom Baptist Church. Amen. Good to be able to have a place. That's my church. Amen. Yes, Let me just yes. say, 
it's an honor for me to extend you the right hand of fellowship into our church. Well, thank you very much. It's an honor to be a member of it. May God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Amen. What a blessing. Praise God for that. Amen. She uh, decided one to take membership with us. What a blessing. Thank you, Lord. What a service. What a great day in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Looking forward to uh, being back out on uh, Wednesday night and uh, Tuesday morning truce for those that can make it. Make sure you be here. If you can't be here, make sure you, you watch online. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the, the service that we had, dear Lord. We thank you for, for my other mom here that want to take membership with us. What a blessing it is. The Lord's here and baptized this morning and uh, to take membership tonight. Lord, we just uh, love her and Rob and thankful for them, dear Lord. We want to pray for safe travels for them as they head out early in the morning. Dear Lord, I ask you to keep us all safe as we go home tonight, dear Lord, and bring us back again uh, safely, dear Lord, on Tuesday morning for those who can and then for Wednesday night for everybody else, dear Lord. And Lord, we just thank you for this church, Father. We thank you for our pastor. We thank you for the, the messages we heard today, dear Lord. Thank you for tonight, Lord, hearing about the the tribulation, Lord, and help us, Father, to have a, a burning desire, Lord, to tell our, our lost friends and families and neighbors and co-workers and people we come in contact, Lord, to, to, they don't want to be left behind, Lord. It's going to be the worst time uh, worst time this earth has, has ever seen, Lord, and uh, help us, Lord, just to, to take the gospel out, Lord, and look for ways to tell us about you and invite people to church and give people our testimony and hand out gospel tracts. Lord, we love you and thank you for us, dear Lord, and nonetheless, we ask not our will, but your will be done in the whole sweet press of the name of Jesus, we pray, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. This mountain a few years ago And I'll keep on climbing Till I can reach heaven's bright shore At times I grow weary My steps get tired I'm moving out, I'm moving up, I'm moving
fin. 